No, this is review. So what we've talked about so far, ladies and gentlemen, in chapter four, is we first started talking about angles, right? And the major important thing that we talked about in an angle is you have an initial and a terminal side, right? Correct? Then the next thing we talked about is, well, let's put an angle on an x and a y axis. So it's still going to have the same properties, but now my angle is just going to be on x and y axis, where when it goes counterclockwise, it's positive, or clockwise, it was what we call the negative angle. Correct? OK. Then the next thing we said is, well, this angle, let's have it intercept a circle, which we're going to call the unit circle. Actually, which we're going to call the unit circle. All right. So then we started talking about different types of measurements of angles. One type of measurement angle is what we talk about degrees, which everybody is pretty familiar with. But then we started talking about a special type of measurement, which we called a radian. And what we noticed was the distance from here to here was a radius. So a radian was the wrap, taking the radius and wrapping it around a circle, correct? And we said it took 3.14159 dot, dot, dot radiuses, or pi, to get around a circle. right? So then I started saying, where is the angle? If I said, graph the angle um, 2. Well, to graph the angle 2, that means 2 radians. So you say the distance of 2 radians, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my angle 1 radian and 2 radians. So we actually would draw that angle right there. So that would be the angle of 2. Makes sense, right? Then once we started, we started talking about angles and radians. And we say, where's 6 radians? Where's 5 radians? Or negative 1 radian, negative 2 radians. Then we started talking about, put it that away, then we started talking about radians or angles that were in terms of pi. Then we started talking about angles that looked like this, pi over 3. So there are fractions of a of a pi. So instead of looking at how many radians it was, we said, well, it's one third of pi. So from here to here was pi, one third of that, one third of that would be somewhere like here. So there to there would be pi over three, right? So if I take my angle and rotate it that way, that's one third of pi. So that's what that angle came up to be, right? You guys kind of remember how we talked about angles? Okay. So once we talked about angles with our circle, we noticed with using the unit circle, there were some important points that we came across. We got 1, 0, and we got 0, 1. And then we wanted to figure out, are there other angles or other other points on our unit circle that we can figure out? And what we learned is we can actually figure out some other angles on there by using, the, um, by using triangles. So what we did was we said, what about if I figured like halfway there, which we called a pi over 4 or 45 degree angle. So what we did was we created a right triangle. And we said, what is this coordinate point? Well, to find that coordinate point, all we need to do is find this distance and that distance. right? So we need to find the legs of the two triangles. We know that the hypotenuse is 1. So what we did by using special triangles, we figured out that this was the square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. Right? That by using our special triangles. And then we did a couple other triangles. We did it here, and we did a point here. And this angle was our 30 degree triangle, and this one was our 60 degree triangle. So we created all these different triangles to find these new points. And what we got was this point is 1 half times square root of 3 over 2. And this point was square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. Right? Do you guys remember that? We just talked about how to find our special right triangles to be able to find these coordinates. So these are all different coordinates on the unit circle. These are the easy ones, 1 comma 0 and 0 comma 1. But we use special right triangles to find the rest of these coordinates. So then. What we started talking about was, well, if we can find the point on the unit circle, Nico, then how can I, can I evaluate that for sine, cosine, and tangent? So we started talking about what was the sine of a point on the unit circle, or what was the cosine of a point on the unit circle, 
or the tangent of a point on the unit circle, right? We started talking about what are those. And so we had to go back to our geometry days and remember what is sine, cosine, and tangent. Well, if I had an angle here, and here's my 90 degrees, remember that my angle had an opposite side, an adjacent, and a hypotenuse, right? So the sine of my angle was equal to my opposite over hypotenuse. That's what we did. Remember we talked about like the Sokotoa and we went through it? So opposite over hypotenuse. So what we did is we looked at each one of these triangles, and what we noticed was it didn't matter if it was a 45-45 triangle. The hypotenuse was always 1, right? Because it's a unit circle. So the hypotenuse is always going to be 1. So since my hypotenuse is always 1, if I take the opposite and put it over 1, what am I always going to have? Just the opposite, right? So therefore, when I did sine of t, where t represents a point on the unit circle, if I said the sine of um, pi over 4, what all that represented to, or I'm sorry, let's just not do t. Sine of t always represented the opposite over the hypotenuse, which was always y over 1. Because y is going to be your opposite side of your central angle, which always just equaled y. So the cosine of t, we said, always represented the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is just x. And the tangent, remember, was opposite over adjacent, which was y over x. So what we did then is we said, all right, well, all these points represent a, a, um, relate to an angle, right? We said that this was our pi over this angle from here to here is pi over 6. From here to here is pi over 4. And from here to here is pi over 3. So if I said I wanted to find what is the sine of pi over 3 for this angle, you just had to look at the y coordinate. If I said what is the cosine of pi over 6, you just looked at the x coordinate. And if I said what was the tangent of pi over 4, you put y over x for this one, which would have been uh, 1. All right? Question. I told you before I started the video it could go. But now I need to hold on because I'm just going to go over one last thing. One last thing. I know. I told you last time before you, I said yes, you can go. Just real quick. Let me just finish this up. So the last thing, the last thing we talked about was our reciprocal identities. So cosecant of t, secant of t, and cotangent of t. And remember, we talked about these are the reciprocals. So if sine is y, the cosecant is 1 over y. Or all you do is you just take the reciprocal. The secant is going to be 1 over x, and the cotangent is going to be x over y. OK? Well, they all change. They all change. They all, you've all, they're all reciprocals of those, of those identities. So let's just take a look. Let, let me just go through one real quick. Let's say I said find the sine of pi over 6. Right? Sine of pi over 6, the sine represents the y coordinate of pi over 6. Pi over 6 is this angle right here. The y coordinate is 1 half. Therefore, the sine of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. So therefore, the cosine of pi over 6 is equal to the x coordinate, which is square root of 3 over 2. The cosecant of that is the reciprocal. So what's the reciprocal of 1 half? 2 over 1. And what's the reciprocal of 2 over square root of 3? Well, when you take the reciprocal, when you flip it, you get 2 over radical 3. Can you have a square root on the bottom? No. So you need to rationalize the denominator. So you get 2 radical 3 over 3. All right. And the last two, just to go through it, tangent of pi over 6, that represents the y over x. So you have 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2. Whoa, what happens here? Right? Well, I'm dividing by 2 on both, so those can actually cancel out or divide out. And so I have 1, one divided by square root of 3 equals square root of 3 over 3. 
All right, and then the cotangent is just going to be the reciprocal of that. So now you flip that over, 3 over radical 3, rationalize the denominator, and you get 3 over radical 3 over 3. Those divide out, and you get square root of 3. Okay? Now the video is over, now you can make go. Okay?